If you've ever tried to put a dynamic array calculation into a table, you'll know that we get the spill error. So in this video, we're looking at four methods that we can use as workarounds so that we can still use dynamic arrays and tables together. So if you're ready, let's get started. Let's start by thinking about the differences between tables and arrays, because they are fundamentally different types of objects. So in a table, if we wanted to sum a column, we could type equals sum, and we could then select our value column. And you'll notice that that column is named. So when we commit that formula, everything works fine. Not only that, but we can also drag this column to different places and it doesn't make any difference. And the reason is because tables use names to refer to columns. However, if we wanted to do the same thing on a dynamic array, we have one here, we could still use that sum function equals sum. We could select our entire array, so F6 hash, but we would need to use either the index or the choose cols function to make sure that we only return the third column. So let's add choose cols. And we just want column number three. We'll close that, we'll close the sum, and then we will commit that. And now that calculates that result. But this was based on position. We can't move this value column if we try to, if we try and drag it, it's not going to change anything because it's all based on our array that starts in cell F6. So tables are based on names and we can place our columns wherever we like because our range will be referenced by its name, not by its position. However, with arrays, we reference ranges by their position because they don't have names. So if we were to place something like an array into a table, we could no longer move the columns in our table. It would break the purpose of what a table is. Okay, now let's go and look at the methods that we can use to work around the incompatibility between these two elements. Let's go and look at our first example. Now, this is a really simple example because we're looking at how we can work with arrays and tables. We're not concerned about whether that calculation means anything in this video. I'm calling this method the synchronized array method. How it works is that we have an array outside of our table and then we link from our table to our array. So here in cell I4, I'll type equals sort and then I want to sort the name column and we'll close that bracket. And when we commit that, we now get our array sorted in ascending order. So if we want to get this into our table, we can simply cell link from our sorted column one into that array. And because it's in a table, that formula will then copy down, which means if we get a new name, Jack Wilson, that will now add into our dynamic array and also then update our table. The second method is the value selection method because a table can return a value from a dynamic array provided it only returns a single value. So here in cell E4, I'll type equals sort, open bracket. I'll select my name column, then close that bracket and then commit that. And you see that we get the spill error for each of our rows. Now what we want is from our array, for our first cell in that row, we want to return the first item from the array. From the second cell, we want to return the second item from the array. From the third cell, we want the third item in the array. How can we do that? Well, for that, we can use the index function. Index, open bracket, we have our array. That is our dynamic array. Then we want to have something that counts the number of rows and it needs to increase as it goes down the table. So we're going to use the rows function and we're going to use another index function. So we're going to use the index of our column and we want our first row. So that means that will always be the first row in that column. Then we want to create this dynamic range using our current row. So we'll close our rows function and then close our index. So what that rows function will do is for our first row, it will calculate one. For our second row, it will calculate two and so on. So when we commit that, you'll see that we now calculate each item from our dynamic array. Now the thing is, it's creating that dynamic array for every single row and then just returning a single value from it. So therefore, Excel is doing a lot of calculation work under the hood. 
So this is a way that we can get dynamic arrays into a table, but it's not particularly efficient. The next method is the collapsed text method. We use this where there isn't a one-to-one -one relationship between the dynamic array and the table. So here in cell F4, I'll type equals filter, and we want to get a list of all the people who exist in the same region. So therefore we want to filter the name column, and we want to get the result where the region is equal to whatever region that person happens to be in. Then we'll close that bracket and commit that function. And again, we get our spill error. You can see our spill range shows that we have three values for this array. What we can do is to use the text join function. So text join, open bracket. We get to say what our delimiter is. In this scenario, let's use a pipe symbol. We want to ignore any empty cells and then we can close that bracket and now when we commit that you can see that we have all of those values but collapsed into a single text string. So that's another way that we can put a dynamic array value inside the table by only returning a single value. In many scenarios the benefit is not from putting a dynamic array into a table, instead putting a table around a dynamic array, because then we would be able to refer to items by their column names. How can we achieve this in another way? Well, let's say here in cell B17, we're going to create our header row. So I'm just going to select the header row of the table. And then below that, let's filter our entire table to return where the region is equal to north. We'll close that and that now spills out. So how can we now refer to a column inside our array using our header row that we've placed above our results? Well, the easiest method is probably with the filter function. Equals filter, open bracket, and we want to filter our array. So that's our full range of B18 hash. And we want to filter that where B17 hash where that is equal to, for example, the value column. So in that scenario, we have referred to our data body, which is our first array. We've then referred to our header row, which was the second array. And then we have the name of the column that we want to get out from our array. And when we commit that, we're now able to select a column from our array using its name. And that's it. That's four methods that we've used to get around the fact that we can't use dynamic arrays inside tables. If you like this video, why not click there to subscribe and then click there for more dynamic array goodness. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time.